I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaga Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? It's a great day. And we have the fashion edition. I said that right. Oh, yeah. We really have a fashion edition here. But today we have one. And we have the designer with us today. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to the show. Okay, so we have our designer with us today, and she has clothes that is all-inclusive, which I love. You know, we all have to be all-inclusive, especially nowadays with so many different things and so many different fashions going in and out. Of, I mean, I mean, we're going backwards and forwards all at the same time. And I want to welcome Elizabeth to the show today. So Elizabeth Bruner, right? That's right. Nice to hey. meet you, Yaya. Thanks for having me. And thank you so much for being on the show. So let's back up a little bit. When did you know that this was something you really wanted to invest your time in? Ooh, it's, it's a great question. Um, well, I had the idea when my kids were four and I noticed that they were sharing clothing from each other's wardrobe. That was my first clue. Um, but to actually start the company took quite a, a lot of time for me to just you know, sit with and decide to invest the time in. And once I had that idea to start stereotype, I really just, you know, went with it and decided I got to go for it because it was really a deep calling for me to do the clothing line. So it took some time for me to gather the courage to do it. It probably took about two years. I, I had the idea in 2018 and then um, and ended up launching the company in at the end of 2020. So it took a, a good two years to get myself up to speed. Let's go back to parenting. Parenting is hard. To say the least, you have different characters with the children. Like my daughter is all about art, all about the 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 whole expression. My son was letter by letter. This is what it is. You cannot change it. This is it. You know. And so I had two different personalities. And it was, it was difficult to say the least to do, to deal with that. Um, how was it, you said that they were, they were sharing each other's clothes. What did you notice about the clothing and what did you notice about your children that influenced your company today? Well, my kids are twins. So I have a boy and a girl and because I have a boy and a girl twins, they were sharing each other's clothing because they share the same size. So my daughter was naturally attracted to camel print. And she loved the dinosaur t-shirts that were in her brother's wardrobe. And then my son just really loved the pink and the purple that were in my daughter's wardrobe. So for me, it was really just stepping away and allowing them to express themselves the way that they needed to, because they were, they're, they're innately drawn to these things, right? It's natural. It wasn't any sort of outside influence. It was just, this is what's available. And they really loved those options. So it was really I think being aware um, and being conscious of, oh, what is this bringing out in my children? And it was joy. It was happiness. And they were feeling good in the clothing that they were putting on their bodies. And I didn't want to change that. So it was really stepping away and allowing them to express themselves the way they wanted to. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because a lot of people say, oh, you know, don't let them do that. But T-shirts and different things and colors are just innately in a person. Your favorite color is this, it might be purple, it might be black. It might just be something that you're attracted to, like you said. You know, I look at it like this, too. It's like, OK, so I sometimes love my husband's pants. I mean, cargo pants with all of the, you know what I mean, all the pockets and stuff. That's mine. You can't have those back. I mean, you know, so it's like, those are my pants. He's like, no, 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 they're not your pants. They're mine. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's like, okay, so you're drawn to different things. Now you said it took you some courage to actually get to the point to actually go public. What happened? What was the courage? What were you looking for? I, you know, had no intention of starting a clothing line. I had a business before and um, I had wound it down and it was also a clothing line called Piece by Piece that I had uh, created in 2010 and launched in 2010. And when I had my twins, you know, they were very young. I didn't want to um, distract myself from raising them. I had, you know, no intention to, to do that. Um, but the calling was so loud. And so for me, it was, I have to do this. I'm a designer. I have all these ideas of how I want to create a gender inclusive clothing line. 
and I, I just couldn't ignore it. So for me, it was really just um, baby steps and um, tiptoeing into this idea of what would it be like? What would I design if I did have this clothing line? You know, and then all of the creative juices really started flowing. And, you know, it was really just, a, I remember a moment where I was just like, okay, it's either I'm in or I'm out. And if I'm in or I'm out, I really have to decide because I can't just be in limbo here of like, well, maybe I can do it, maybe not. It was really believing in myself, betting on myself 100%. And that does take courage, right? Because you're not really taught to do that. You're just, you know, and, and maybe you have um, outside influences that are encouraging you or discouraging you. And so for me, it was really about building up my own self-esteem and deciding to go for it. And I also looked at my children and I'm, I want to create a better world for them where they can express themselves freely. And that means all children. So it really became this mission for me. And I just didn't want to let it pass me by. So here I am going for it. I hear you. I hear you. And, you know, going for something like that, what was that like designing the clothes to be kind of like across the board? uh, the way that you wanted it to be, you know, there's, there's uh, designing stuff is difficult to say the least, but designing according to a gender neutral or a gender inclusive or whatever the case, how did you go about doing that? I mean, it was actually quite easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I really looked at my kids and what they were wearing and my daughter's naturally attracted to black. And so, I was like, okay, well, making a clothing line with mostly black in it makes sense because clothing gets stained and dirty and especially kids clothing. So for me, it was practical. And then I started thinking about, well, it has to be play clothes because they're both very active and they like to climb trees and I like to be outside. And um, so it was really just uh, revealing to myself, what is it that I appreciate as a parent when I'm shopping and what is it that would be practical, but also unique for my children? So um, and for the clothing line. So making clothing like the blazer, I don't know if you saw the blazer, but there's um, a really beautiful blazer on our website that is made of sweatshirt material. So it looks really nice and refined. It's super well made, but it's made from sweatshirt material. So it's very cozy and it looks great on, you can throw it in the wash. So for me, it was what's the practical side and then how can I make this clothing line stand out? in a very unique way. So that that was actually the funnest part. The best part about it is just getting my creative juices going, like I said, and just having fun with it. And then, you know, having my kids give me the feedback and say, well, why don't you add this? Or I, this is itchy, or this is really fun to play in, or I like the way this looks on me. So I had my audience already, you know, in my family. So they were perfectly happy to give me the feedback. And I just went from there. And that was actually the best part of the journey is creating all of all of the looks for the clothing line. I got gotcha. you. You know, that's that's very cool. That's really cool because it's like a built in kind of audience. You know, hey, I'm gonna just like, you know, fashion this. And what do you think? You know, hey, <laughs> so you don't have to go anywhere. You, like all ups, there are downs. What was something that you went through that really taught you a good lesson? I mean, every day, <laughs> every day, there's a lesson for me. Um, it's hard work being an entrepreneur, you know, there's no guarantees clearly. Um, but I think, you know, launching during COVID was certainly a, a huge hurdle for me, right? I, I had um, no product. I launched at the end of 2020 in November. I only had images of the samples that were made. And I was just, just thought, you know, I have to get this out there as soon as possible. So for me, it was really just this drive to get this mission out that you can dress beyond gender norms and it's okay. And so for me, that was the driving force. And it was a hurdle to obviously launch during COVID and then to keep the business going, but it, it, it felt so meaningful. So I just let that that meaning and that purpose override the fear. And, you know, that's sort of my antidote now for whenever I get really, you know, worried or I get stressed out or anxiety shows up, I come back to my calling. What is my purpose? And that seems to help me override that fear and keep going. What would be like the one thing that you would say, if I knew this, then, then man, <laughs> I mean, I've said that, you know, how many times I've said that so far? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Yes. So if I do, what, what would be your advice to people? Cause usually that would be the advice you would give yourself if you knew it then if, what, what you know now, you know? Yeah. It's a great question. You know, I, I would say, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. So okay. 
you know, you're constantly pushing yourself as an entrepreneur and you, you have no idea how uncomfortable it's going to be until you're actually in it. And I'm actually an introvert. I'm more on the shy side. So for me, it's even more uncomfortable to put myself out there and to talk about the clothing line, talk about myself, but I've just made it again, my mission and my purpose to override that fear. And so get comfortable being uncomfortable is the best I, advice I can give. That's a great, that's great. That's great. Yes. Yes. Most people think that I'm an, out, um, you know, what is it? An outrovert? Is that an outrovert? And I don't know. I'm an introvert. An extrovert. Like a, extrovert. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Cause you got out and in, that's how I figured it. But <laughs> an introvert, I am an introvert. I like to be in my little room by myself and pretend like no one's watching me while I interview people. I, I just, I guess it's the drive and the I have to do this because this is me and who I am. What do you feel it, and how would you feel if someone took away the very thing that made you live? Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> that is deep. What would I do? I mean, I guess it would depend on what that was. You know, I I feel like I'm a very heart-centered person. And so with that, I would move in the direction of the flow as much as I could, um, whatever that meant. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a great question. I wish I I had a, a good answer for it. But you know, listening to yourself, listening to a calling, your intuition, whatever you want to say about it, I think is really important, especially in a business, because it does take a lot of heart. And, um, you know, losing my, my way, I guess in, in that sense would be really difficult for me. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to stay heart centered as much as possible with everything I do. I hear you. And the reason why I ask that question is because a lot of people answer that question, just like you, they don't really have the answer, but the answer is you couldn't. That's true. That's true. Couldn't. So if there is something that you can't live without then why would you these are just questions that i ask people and i'm like you know it's it's so cool to sit here and interview people like yourself it's beautiful because you know elizabeth has gone after it and what i hear is that your heart is completely in this business which is wonderful and that's why it's successful that's why it's it's being you know placed in the forefront that's why it's you know, succeeding today. And if it wasn't there, you wouldn't be the person that you are today. That's very true. That's very true. It's, it's certainly fostered a lot of growth and, and stretching myself beyond comfort. Absolutely. Awesome. Where can people find your clothing line? My clothing line is at stereotypekids.com. And you can also follow on Instagram, which is stereotypekidsofficial.com. And yeah, sign up for our newsletter. We have a lot of great content that we put out that's just specifically for our customers. So sign up, get a discount, and we'd love to have you as part of our community. Awesome. We're going to put that information in the description box so it'll be easy for you to find it. You know, I just, I absolutely love it when people go after their dreams and their goals. If you are sitting there going, I really want to just do it. Just don't, don't talk about it anymore. It's not about talk. It's about action. If you can get up and do one thing every day, do it. Because without it, you're not going to be the person you really see yourself as. Keep going. Thank you, Elizabeth, for being on the show. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, Yaya. Yeah, it was so fun. Uh, I had so much fun. I love prying. I do. It's terrible. Anyway, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until next time, guys. Bye.